hello and welcome to Invictus Porsche. We've got a Porsche 911 991 Turbo S on a 2015 plate and we've got a McLaren 570S on a 2016 plate. Here we are in 2022 and you've got between 80 to 90,000 pounds to spend. What would you buy? Well, to give you a short answer, if I had that sort of money and I wanted to go out and buy one, this is what I'll be buying. So hopefully that should kind of reassure you which way I'm leading towards. And that's purely because of what the McLaren 570S offers from an experience, both from an aesthetic, from an engineering, the amount of F1 technology that is used. And overall, I think it is an absolutely true icon of engineering. And this is still British made in Surrey. And I think for me, they will have my money. But the 911 991 Turbo S has a lot of heritage. I mean, these 911s, they go back to, in terms of what they're based off, they go back all the way to the 1950s. In 1963 is when they introduced and built the first 911, and they've had the 911 Turbo not long after the 930, which was very well known as the Widowmaker. And then over the years, we've had the 993 Turbo, we've had the 996 Turbo, the 997 Turbo, and this was the new generation or the new breeds of 911 Turbos produced under the Vark flagship banner. Are they stunning? Yes, they are. Are they very well put together? Without a doubt. They've got a lot of heritage, they've got a lot of history, but the 911s have always been known to be the understated car, that car that you can take down to the supermarket and nobody will notice you. But in 2022, I think in some ways, when I'm driving around in a supercar, I would like to be noticed and I would like to be driving in something like this. In terms of BHP, sorry, in terms of where the engine is. So you've got a rear mid-engine configuration. This is what you have on the McLaren. On the 911, the, the engine is right behind the rear axle. So that is all the way to the back of this. You've got a 3.8 liter um, Boxer 6, uh, six-cylinder naturally aspirated engine. In this, you've got the V8 3.8 litre turbocharged engine. This produces 562 bhp and it does just over 600 newton meters of torque. Whereas in terms of bhp, this is not far from a bhp point of view to the McLaren. I think from memory it's at about 550 to 560 and the torque that this offers is a lot more than the McLaren. In terms of an overall day-to-day -day experience from a daily ability point of view, most people would say that the McLaren is that more practical, no, sorry, the 911 is the more practical, the more daily build car because you've got a big massive front boot, you've got a two plus two layout. And I guess it's the two, it's the two plus two layout from a practicality point of view, which is what works in the favor of the 911. But how often am I going to have people at the back? You know, not often, therefore, I can, daily the, I can daily the McLaren 570S and I've still got a good size front boot space to put my belongings in there and overall I'm in something that is British made, well engineered, that is I think in my uh, estimation and my experience of having had this now for quite a number of days, uh, an absolutely mind blowing experience. Wherever I go I get asked about it, people want to talk to me. And what better way to start that experience from simply just opening the, 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 the hallmark of what McLarens are all about is the dihedral doors. And I think it's things like this that you find in the McLaren that is truly eye-catching. As well as you've got other things like how well all of the interior is put together and built. I mean, this doesn't need to shout out that you're in a McLaren, but from having simply the way the key is designed, which is this gorgeous shape there with the McLaren logo, which is almost like a Nike swoosh, to having the certain areas of the interior and the exterior reflecting what the corporate logo of McLaren looks like with this beautiful swoosh in the middle. And I think all in all, um, this being uh, having the monocoque uh, chassis, uh, a lot of carbon is used um, to make this a lighter car. I think in total, in terms of wood fluids, this weighs 1,452 kilograms, whereas the Porsche 911 uh, is not much heavier, but you can feel 
the lightness of the McLaren 570S. You can feel all the F1 technology and the F1 setup. I think from a supercar point of view and from a supercar experience point of view, this is what I would like to have in my garage rather than the 911 Turbo S. But, you know, this is German engineering, well put, well built. But it's not to say this isn't as good or as well put together or as reliable. I think equally people need to give the McLaren 570 an opportunity and a chance to experience something like this, to actually appreciate what an amazing phenomenal car is before they can actually jump onto the bandwagon and judge the McLaren 570S. And if you haven't owned one and you haven't experienced one or you haven't driven one, uh, I think it's better to keep those opinions to yourself. And um, let's see what McLaren brings next. Uh, in 2016, they were only around for a very short while. Um, I think for about four years when they produced this and I think there's a lot more to come from a company like this. So, sorry. <laughs> thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to press subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. And thank you again for watching the video because you're helping towards a good cause because all the money that we raise from our YouTube channels gets donated to a UK registered charity. Currently, we're in the process of building a school in Afghanistan. So it helps massively. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Let me go away and enjoy my car. Thank you.